Good evening, my name is Louise Martirano and I'm the Executive Director of Redline Contemporary Art Center. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for our first ever virtual one square foot, six feet apart anonymous art sale and fundraiser. So I'm so sad that our conversation tonight is being mediated by screens. I'm so grateful to connect with you, to share with you that how much we miss you here at Redline. We are okay, we hope you are okay, and that your families are healthy and safe. I also want to express my sincere condolences to anyone who has lost loved ones. Myself and Redline are not excluded to that from this year. I lost my father, who was a pediatrician who practiced medicine for 40 years in Colorado, Dr. Frank Martirano, and I miss him every day. Also, we lost one of our first generation artists, Rory Knutson, who was a fierce environmental activist. She was a supporter of alternative economies for artists uh, and a filmmaker and loving mother of two boys. I say this tonight because we share in your grief, we hold your grief with you, and we want you to know that we want to check in on you and want you to check in on us during this really hard time for our communities. Thank you to all of our partners in relief efforts, the Colorado Artist Relief Fund and the, Commu and the Colorado Music Relief Fund. Thank you also to the artists who helped both address a health crisis and we could support their economic crisis in our Makers for Mass program, which provided over 2,000 masks to area shelters and frontline RTD drivers. Thank you also to our founder, Laura Mirage, and the David Laura Mirage Foundation for your 12 years of supporting our mission to foster education and engagement between artists and communities to create positive social change. Tonight, we will keep things short, but we did want to give you an insight on what we've been up to. We want to introduce you to our new resident artists, which we're so excited to welcome, to bid a fond farewell and hear some advice from some outgoing artists to the new residents coming in. And of course, we want to share with you how we'll be expanding and extending our Afrofuturism theme of 2020 into 2021 and explore how this genre sets the stage of a world that we would all love to imagine and live within. Greetings, everyone. My name is Hakeem Furious with Slam Nuba, and we have had the pleasure to be partners with Redline for the past two years, delivering spoken word and poetry events to the local community. And we're here today to bring some to you. The saying the creeps come out at night is not a myth, is 100% true, filled with sleepwalk stalkers, PM peeping toms, the corny and the homeless. I work the graveyard shift at a gas station. The zombies come and pay me a visit like they can smell the blood on my hands. If a person cares about community, then they will invest themselves in that community. Ever since I started working for the petroleum industry, I've entered people's routines of monotony, daily visits where we develop a relationship with each other. I say good morning as they grunt at me for their coffees and smokes. They track their muddy boots all over my freshly mopped floor and continuously forget what pump they're on. What do you mean you want 15 on the Subaru. There's six Subarus here. This hourly wage has turned me into the quiet assailant of death. I sit silently as I make sure the soda is stocked, selling high fructose corn syrup by the leaders. I feel like the government hustling sugar and gas. I'm a therapist, worse enemy, the enabler, making sure the ice cream is stocked so the lonely can eat their feelings. A artillery filled with snacks to combat their red eyes and munchies, fluoride in every pack of gum. I sell lottery tickets by the loads. The fiends come and peel the numbers back like they're a race all the wrongdoing they've ever done. Every shift a woman comes in and spends a college tuition on crosswords and bingos. I am binge watching this tug of war of you win some, you lose some. In this material world, success is a lottery. You can work harder than anyone else. Cloak yourself with enough hope and good faith 
and there won't always be a winning ticket. Sometimes you need to change directions and try a new ride or play the game until there's a big bonanza behind box number six. My favorite part is the cigarettes, the jump start to a person's day, Marlboro Mondays, new pack of Newports by noon, sometimes selling camels by the cart in hundreds on your lunch break. It's the American spirit. I listen to people explain why they smoke certain cigarettes because it's healthier for them. It's as absurd as claiming that your God is the only God. And by the end of the shift, I am fluent in menthol, a premium package product for pollution and profit. Philip Morris is literally making a killing. My sleep schedule promotes both insomnia and narcolepsy, but that doesn't get to me. There's nothing I couldn't handle until one day a high school boy walks in, Kleenex skin tone and buys tea and some candy. His friend, a blunt wrap and some cigarettes. Don't they know the time bomb they strapped on their chest? Angered by the fact in six hours, there'll be no cause of terror or questioning by the police or interviewing for video footage. Those oblivious boys carelessly escape their assassination. 40 hour work weeks and nothing is more exhausting than the extinction of my people. It wears on me like a uniform. This convenience store rigor mortis, embalming my spirit with melanin and love, hustling every day until my body becomes fossil fuel. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lattice Feliciano, and I am the Art Grants Manager at Redline. This year, the Arts and Society Collaborative Program and Insight Fund rapidly responded to our communities in crisis by offering additional cycles of funding to help artists and cultural organizations respond to the complex social, economic, and health challenges during this pandemic. For this, we want to say thank you to our Arts and Society Collaborative, including Bonfi Stanton Foundation, Colorado Creative Industries, the Colorado Health Foundation, Himera Foundation, and the Scientific and Cultural Facilities District for allocating two years of funding in one year to be responsive to this challenging time. Thank you also to the Warhol Foundation for inviting Redline to invest the Insight Fund into the Colorado Artist Relief Fund in partnership with the Denver Arts and Venues, Colorado Creative Industries, Himera Foundation, and community members like you. These efforts combined have invested over $2 million of support to creative individuals, organizations, and communities across Colorado. Founded in 2011, Modus Theater creates original theater to facilitate dialogue on critical issues of our time. Modus aims to use the power of art to build alliances across diverse segments of our community and country. Storytelling is at the heart of what makes us human. Modus Theater focuses on bringing marginalized voices or silenced histories to the stage. Modus Theater is a three-year grantee of Arts and Society. First, in 2018, for Undocu America, a multimedia storytelling project featuring autobiographical monologues written and performed by undocumented leaders about the challenges facing them and their families. I find hope in my allies who are standing with me and my friends against these cruel immigration policies. And I pray that you will stand with us. Please think of my children and all the other undocumented immigrants who are suffering in this country. In 2019, MODIS launched Sanctuary Sundays, a truly collaborative project to lift up the stories of immigrants in sanctuary through documentary performances, public readings by members of the Colorado State House and church and civic leaders, and through intimate private readings in book clubs and community groups. And now, in 2020, 
Modus Theater's Just Us Project collaborates with formerly incarcerated leaders to create autobiographical monologues exploring the injustice, bias, and violence within the criminal justice system. Modus Theater has provided a, a voice to those who were voiceless, and as a result, um, a lot of people are, you know, speaking about things that they weren't speaking about, the injustices of the justice system. Modus exemplifies the connection between the arts and social change that arts and society champions. We are grateful for their thoughtful and powerful work. Thank you to all arts and society grantees. We need a quarantine. This ancient war machine is broken. War machine is broken, broken. My name is Reagan Rosberg, and I am an interdisciplinary artist. I work in a variety of mediums, but my work always discusses the intersection of nature and culture. My advice to incoming residents is to say yes. Say yes to working with you know, the community programs. I did the, uh, the art core program and worked with young kids and it was so uplifting and rewarding and heartwarming. And I feel like I've you know, developed a strong connection with these young kids and seeing the potential in you know, who they could become and why, why they are so important, why the arts programs in schools are so, so important, especially for underrepresented youth. And I would also say yes to, you know, seeing how your work can affect the greater community, especially with everything that's going on right now. I think that we have an opportunity to be part of a, a bigger conversation, even if our work might not be related. I think that the community here and the community that Redline works with pushes you to reevaluate how you can have an affect on the world. Hi, I'm Victor Escobedo, one of the new artists in residence at Redline. I like to describe my work as an ephemeral at the real experience. I'm a contemporary artist of an interdisciplinary practice. I'm excited to join Redline's community, link with like minds, and tap into my highest self. Um, as a recipient of those inner visions, I'm really looking forward to seeing what I can excavate and what materializes. And I'm really looking forward to see what manifests. My name is Cherish Marcus. Um, my medium is in uh, digital, primarily within game design. And so I create um, vast explorative landscapes uh, based off of the like land that I'm from. So I'm excited to be a new resident or at Redline um, because I feel supported by Redline, not only as an artist, but as an individual. Uh, and I think that, especially right now, um, artists need a space to create, to develop, and to grow. And Redline offers that um, to the artist community. And so I feel honored, honored to be a part of the collective that is Redline. My creative practice is really rooted in abstract painting, um, but really sits at the intersection of painting and installation and meditation. I'm so excited to be a new Redline resident for a million reasons, um, but the main reason for me is really just, um, I feel like Redline has a structure and this residency is structured really for the arts to be in service of community, um, and that's really important to my practice and just how I want to grow as an artist. Um, you know, whether it's education programs or community-based programs, I'm really interested in just um, being of service to the community. Uh, so, yeah. I'm Edgar of Edgar L. Page Feel the Movement, a practitioner that centers the human experience by looking at how we connect and evolve through emotion and the body. I am incredibly excited to be incoming as a resident with Redline. My name is Eileen Rosina, and I work across a lot of different mediums. When I got to Redline, I was doing a lot of film and 2D illustration, but as my studio space increased, so did the size of my artworks, and I've been working with a lot of natural materials, 
willow and pressed flowers, as well as resin, cyanotypes, um, and different installations. I think my advice for incoming residents is to really make yourself available to be at Redline as much as possible. Um, just because of the unique situation here with the open studios and the other residents, I found it so valuable to just walk into someone's studio and have a conversation, which led to a whole show, or like you meet someone random walking in. Um, so to be here as much as possible and to take advantage of um, all of the different programs that Redline has to offer, um, but really just to, to really be present with your fellow artists, that was like the most valuable thing for me. Just enormous amounts of knowledge and wisdom to be gained just from your peers. <laughs> My primary art medium is printmaking. I particularly loved its unpredictability. I am very excited to be resident at the Red Line because I want to expand my network of artist friends and influences. Also, I want to use my art to communicate with wider community. This pandemic cause, has caused me to think a lot about what is important and also um, what I want to achieve with my art. Hi, I'm JC Futrell, Director of Education here at Redline Contemporary Arts Center. When organizations started canceling live events in an effort to stop the spread of COVID-19, Redline quickly pivoted from hosting exhibitions and public talks to remote events with socially distant in-person community outreach. Although our programming changed its delivery, we did not change our commitment to our community. Our 48 Hours of Socially Engaged Art and Conversation Summit went virtual this year. We hosted our program on multiple platforms with help from our friends at We Are Denver and the Black Actors Guild. We hosted local and national speakers, musicians, grassroots organizations, and social justice warriors, all under the theme of Afrofuturism. Our REACH studio closed its doors, but started hosting Zoom calls and eventually began reconvening in City Park for gatherings we affectionately call Art in the Park. Each week we have a group of about 20 artists creating outdoors. ArtCore Mentoring continued its support for our students and families throughout the entire summer. We drop off art supplies and dinner, courtesy of Sexy Pizza, to a different family every week. Our program has reconvened virtually this October, and we are excited to continue to empower our students, artists, and educators. Epic Arts hosted its annual exhibition on our website, and we are extending the program into May of 2021. We have converted the Morris and Joyce Price Art Bank into a virtual wish list, where schools will put in their requests for supplies. The pandemic has given us a renewed purpose, whether it's Black Lives Matter, voter registration, or economic relief to individuals hit hardest by the virus, we are here and we are Redline. My work is, is largely based on futility and absurdity, programmed and automated tools and toys and objects doing uh, certain things to the point of failure or to the point of exhaustion. This is such a hub for the Denver arts community that um, you meet amazing people constantly. And also because of that, you know, the opportunities that arise just by being here um, is the, the incredibly grateful for them. And I feel like that's been such an amazing part of, of, of the two years uh, is kind of just being at the center of this hub of a network of amazing artists and, and people who are really interested in, in what's going on in the contemporary art scene in, in Denver. Hi, my name is Adri Norris and I create artwork about women in history. My series called Women Behaving Badly features individuals that we tend not to learn about in schools. And so I am very excited to be here at Redline and bring this work to this space to collaborate with all the artists who are in this space and to work as closely as possible with members of the community. Hello, my name is Ben Coleman. My art making practice typically spills over over a range of disciplines. My roots lie in sound making and performance making, but it's not unusual for my work to feature other media. So that could be music, 
video, sculpture or installation, just a few examples. I am excited to be a new Redline artist because of the amazing community that's been built here. I'm a very collaborative artist and Redline is a hub for creativity in Denver. So I'm really excited to explore new ideas and make new work with this amazing community. I'm Tony Ortega. I want to welcome you to Redline. It has been a great opportunity for me these last two years as I've been a resident artist. Probably the most important thing that's happened to me here is, is getting to know the community, getting to know the community of staff, the executive director, uh, board members, uh, fellow artists, collectors, gallery owners, etc. Just people I would have never had a chance to share my ideas, share my work with. I think this is a great opportunity for any artist who becomes a resident here at Redline. Hi, hello, my name is Sam Krabowska. I work across a variety of media, including photography, video, installation, and sculpture. Um, everything's kind of tied together by this theme of refuge, basically how and where we shelter ourselves from the trauma in our lives. I'm really honored to be a new resident at Redline. It's an incredible opportunity to expand and refine my art practice, as well as um, create and support and forge connections with Denver's local communities. Hello, I'm Chris Bagley and i um, going into my second year as a resident and uh, I generally work with a lot of found objects, stuff that's a bit unconventional. My advice is to use your space as much as you can. You have a, an opportunity and I know it's a challenge because of all of the, the protections that we need to, to deal with. It's still the best deal in town. I'm looking forward to meeting everyone and uh, hopefully we can find some cool collaborations and, uh, and go berserk. Hi, my name is Rochelle Johnson and I'm an oil painter. Um, currently I'm working on two series. Um, one is what I call the Urban Life series. The other is Blue World series. The Urban Life series focuses on the black narrative, um, multiple figures in one painting. I intend to work big, bigger, um, since I have this great space to accommodate me. Um, the Blue World series is talking about colorism. Um, I chose to paint um, new figures in the color blue as a neutral color um, so that people didn't focus so much on skin color. Um, I'm looking forward to be a resident at Redline, um, mainly because I want to be around a community of artists so that I can be inspired. I've been working with wood for several years and uh, I'm very lucky to have this place here for a couple of years. I'm very pleased about it and unfortunately it's going to be over pretty soon. <laughs> and uh, But I've had a studio downtown somewhere for about 45 years so uh, maybe it's time to go home and retire. No. I don't think so. <laughs> this has been a very good experience to be here. Anybody else that has an opportunity to come here should be very pleased about it too. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Victor Machado. I'm a painter. Um, my work uh, examines um, the societal forces that um, increase rates of mental illness. Um, I'm really excited to be a new resident at Redline. Um, I think what I'm most excited about is just being in this environment, like it's so creative and engaging. Um, yeah, I'm just really, uh, I think Redline has a special place in Denver and I'm just, I'm really excited to be a part of it. Hi, my name is Laura Ann Samuelson and I am a dancer and choreographer who works in performance and sculpture and writing. I'm really excited to be one of the new artists in residence at Redline. 
mostly because I'm really impressed with the organization and the, its commitment to asking questions around what it means to be in community and what it means for people to come together around the creation of culture and what it means to show up for one another. I think that I'm excited to see what happens to my practice being working to, working in the context of Redline and I'm just really looking forward to being part of it all. Thank you. My name is Vinny Alfonso. I'm a painter primarily. I'm mostly excited about Redline for the community. Bunch of artists making cool stuff in one space. It's the dream. My name is Lattice Feliciano and I make animations and installations using a style I call moving collage. You know, my biggest piece of advice would be to take advantage of all of the opportunities that are um, presented to you, whether it's studio visits, um, exhibitions, or just an opportunity to hang out with your fellow residents and learn from them. You know, it's bittersweet to say goodbye because there's so many wonderful folks coming in. Um, but I would say, you know, the best thing about the residency for me was the other residents, um, being able to connect with other residents and learn from their practices um, and see how my practice could be inspired by their work. I'm a drawing fanatic and so um, a lot of my work is actually using film stills to uh, create drawings. Since I was accepted in the residency I I've been able to turn off the news and um, you know I've just got all these great ideas f from years really of kind of thinking about having an opportunity like this, you know, to open up my horizons and, you know, I've just been, you know, preparing all this stuff, you know, to kind of, you know, build the perfect studio and I'm, I'm just, you know, so excited to have, you know, a group of, of art enthusiasts around me, you know, to finally kind of take my work into, you know, a new direction and kind of make it, I don't know, what I, what, what I always hoped it would be. My name's Caleb Hahn and my paintings are dealing with themes of memory and bravery and boyhood and also just a little bit of my identity. You know, I grew up half Jewish, half Latino, so my paintings are kind of revolving around those things and my community. I would say that the most valuable things that I got out of Redline were the studio visits and the community itself here. I think it's really important to be involved in what your studio mates are up to and also just building a dialogue amongst each other and you know I think that I got a lot out of it because it felt like school um, in the sense that I could talk to people whenever I wanted to um, and just kind of get feedback on whatever I was working with and also just signing up for those studio visits I think really helps you build a lexicon around what you're doing and what you're trying to say with your work and I found that really valuable. My name is Lori Links Murphy I'm a bioartist, which means I work with systems in nature to make art. Um, nature's finicky, so I also make more what people would think of as more traditional kind of sculpture and work with a lot of wood and natural materials. Um, I'm so excited to be a resource artist because I have spent my entire career trying to teach artists how to be more professional. I'm so excited to get to like give to my community in that way. And also just to be here, I've wanted to be here for so long. So it's just like winning the lottery. It is now my great pleasure to introduce you to Greg Legero, our board chair, and our incoming board chair, Meg Satram. Greg's term ends this year, and he has been involved with Redline and the chair for the last three years, but part of this community for the last eight. Greg, I want to say thank you for the generosity volunteerism and expertise that you brought to this organization that will have a lasting impact on me, the staff, the mission of the organization, and every person that it touched. Thank you for your leadership and support. We will miss you, but we know that you'll stay close. Thanks, Louise. It's been such a pleasure to be part of Redline's last eight years of growth. And Meg, really looking forward to your leadership going forward. You've been such an incredible supporter of the organization, the staff, and the artists. You have a formidable strategic mind, and I know you'll lead Redline into even greater things in the future. Thank you, Greg. My name is Meg Satram, and as the incoming chair of Redline's board, I want to say thank you for joining us tonight. I also want to take a moment and thank Redline's staff, 
the artists, our volunteers, and the board for their continued support of our mission. I sincerely hope that you all had a great evening with us tonight, and I want to thank you for joining us. I also want to say that we are here for you, and we continue to be here as a partner, ready to listen. We're enormously grateful for all you do. Now please get ready and join us for the online auction.